You're listening to the Poco a Poco podcast, sponsored by Spirit Juice Studios. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know hey, that's who we everybody. are. Hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, po- my- As you can tell by that laugh, this is the Poco a Poco podcast. <laughs> I'm Father Mark Mary. I'm Father Angelus, who's having struggle with my microphone. <laughs> and I'm Father Innocent. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I think, oh, you, I think, we're good. I think, I think you need to put it so it's not that. I got you right here. There you that? go. There you go. There. One of the we're com- a mess. We're actually a mess. great start. <laughs> Professionals. Good um, start. Strong start. All right. We get some encouragement about your laughter. People say keep laughing. Speaking of that, someone said they're like, oh, when I when it's the high pitched laughter, I know it's Father Innocent. Wow. There you go. It, it, it kind of struck a kind mm-hmm. of a chord. I mean, it's, it's like. Oh, I'm not actually going for high pitched. Yeah. Like high pitched, like translation to like a squeal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're that, you're the absent friar. I'm the mean friar. You're the squealer. squealer. <laughs> yeah. The, the one who kind of laughs like a. By the way, yeah. having problems with my microphone here, I'm surprised the first thing you said was, well, you don't really know how to use the equipment because you're never here. <laughs> I mean, so. <laughs> I feel like we should move past that, that narrative because you're I, here. You're going to be here. You are faithful. I, and I enjoy being here. We got to. St- our Lady of Tenderness, who we talked about in the last episode, has to work. I think anyway, she she she's a mama. She knows how to be a mama. I really voice. enjoyed that, by the way. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> we just got to make sure we don't have our manger voices. No manger yeah, voices no, this time. We're okay. A high energy, like, <laughs> like the no, like, that's not that high, bro. Not that high, bro. Chill out. Like rawr. Like yay. <laughs> So here, we're just going to get, let's go. Go. You guys ready? I'm following you. So we just finished the Erasmo Leva Maricacus, Father Simeon, sort of, what do you want? That was of, a good go up, by the way. I appreciated that. I appreciate yeah. him. We moved through it quicker than I thought, but it was good. Jim's along the way. P- I think people enjoyed it too. Is that right? an on-air criticism? No, Is that no, like no, a no, little, no. Like, a, like a little. It was good. I'm confirming <laughs> that. It didn't necessarily meet up to my expectation. Or, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it wasn't what I was expecting it was going to be. But I thought it worked really well, and I think people enjoyed it. Yeah. I think so, too. We got great feedback, and people, I think, bought the book. People, it sold out on Amazon. I don't know if it probably had something to do with this. So nice job, people. And it was one of your guys' recommendations to do it. Yeah, big fan. So nice recommendation. So we're, we're, we're pivoting, and what we're going to do is we're going to, I think, if, if the numbers are right, from where we started to where we're at now, we have a, a ton of new listeners, right? So we have, we don't need to number it, but a lot, of, a lot of new people who haven't really heard everything we've said to this point. I think one of the central themes of this podcast was from the words of Father Angelus, being fascinated with Jesus. Mm. Like we want, we're called to be fascinated with Jesus. We want you to be fascinated with Jesus. We want to be fascinated to, with Jesus, with each other, together. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's kind of like, well, that's, like it's it. that's well kind of, said. That's kind of discipleship. <laughs> yeah. Communal fascination with Jesus. Ooh. Come on. I like that. Talk to me about fascination with Jesus. I why it's important. Th- I just think there's a competition for our hearts. And our, it, that manifests itself in what we're co- uh, fascinated with in the world. And we spend time on what we're fascinated by. And so when we're fascinated by the world, we're fascinated by the election. We're fascinated by what's going on. We're fascinated by sports. All not bad things. But if it's, I'm more fascinated with the worldly things than I am of the Lord, that has a fruit in my life and, and bears it, bears it, has an effect in my life. So what fascinates me most and our proposal, especially when we follow Jesus, if Jesus fascinates me, that will set off an abundance of fruit and grace in my life uh, that can be beyond what, what I hope for or imagine. We're going to get into Isaiah 9, but just because like, we're not going to go there, yet, is I think this is like, this is, so, this is it. Like, why do you, you're getting distracted by all this other, like Our Lady of Tenderness, like where she looks deeper. You're, you're staying on the surface, you're getting distracted by all of this stuff, which at the end of the day doesn't matter and distracts you, pulls you away from that which is most important for what your heart has made, being like this relationship with the Lord, this intimacy with the Lord. Like, totally. Stop it. And <laughs> it, it's a moment to be Franciscan too, right? The, the reality too, if, the, if I'm engaged in the world, that leads me deeper. So whatever I do when I I go to work or whatever I do in my relationships, whatever I do with my friends or whatever I do when I enjoy the world, does it lead me deeper? And does it allow me to be fascinated with the truth of of what's going on rather than just using something in the world? But does it lead me to the Lord? Do I experience it as a gift? Do I experience the Lord blessing me? That's a really Franciscan thing. That's why Francis loved the birds because not because they were just birds, because the birds reminded him 
they brought him deeper. They brought him deeper. And then the, the, the sun and the moon and the stars and everything took him deeper into the experience of the one who made those things. And that's why Francis is, is a man that we go after. Not because he just stayed on, the, that he loved nature. It's because nature reminded him of God. And so everything was, he was doing and experience was taking him deeper. So it's not like we don't want to say, don't appreciate the world or don't appreciate those things, but let them fascinate you with the deeper reality and that of who God is and how God reveals himself in those things. All the things, every blessed thing we do, how God reveals himself. Got me fired up. Yeah, and and that's your one homily. I appreciate it. (laughs) (laughs) And my one homily is I use, I like to, as you guys know, I like to Explain the one homily thing real fast. (laughs) We've already had that. But explain it again. But the, the reality that... All of us have a living word in, in us, right? And especially we talked about this as priests. Like Father John Paul said it again last night, our community servant. He's like, I have one homily. I just like use it as a lens with every ho- like scripture and homily we do. Jesus comes alive in us in one, in one way, the living word. And Jesus can do it every once. But we all, like Ange loves talking about being fascinated with Jesus and his homilies. You'll get there. And that's like, that's the way you see things. Mm. And the one homily that I often talk about is, is this call and this desire that God, God has to, to, for us to live in relationship with him in everything, right? Like we are called to relationship, right? So it doesn't matter if it's in your job. It doesn't matter if it's, it's in the context of your, your home. Um, I think of, you know, homeschooling. I th- think of like all these different things that families and moms and dads go through. It doesn't matter if you're religious or priest. Um, you, could, you could be struggling and you could have... You could have be going through a tough season in your life. But my question is, are we living in relationship? I have a, like a sign for it with the postulate. It's like, you can't see me right now, but it's like in relationship, everything. Our experiences are all in relationship. And then things change and we're allowed to go deeper because my suffering means something. When I answer the door, you know, and when one of our neighbors is standing there, am I doing that in relationship or am, am I just annoyed that they interrupted me at dinner or holy hour or whatever? Every, the invitation to live in relationship with the living God in everything that I do. And I absolutely mean everything. And things begin to change, right? Because we be, the fascination with Jesus begins to become possible every moment of my life. God is calling me to live in relationship. And the questions are, and hopefully through this podcast, like, is, is this possible for me? Am I living this way? Is everything, every single part of my life, in relationship with, with God. I want to count how many times he just said the relation, relationship the last <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. So when Father Angelus made fun of you at the skit the other night, he, you he, kind of said, you kind of said he like, he exaggerated you. He, well, <laughs> no, he pretty just, much the skit right there. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty much Nailed it. it. Um, <laughs> and, and to kind of quote the, the catechism in a, a loose sense, like if you're not in relationship with the Lord, at some particular times, you're not going to be in relationship with the Lord at all times, mm-hmm. which is this idea of like, you don't pray at particular times. You're never, you're not, you're not going to pray at all times. If you're not praying at particular times. And so just these, and you were listening to this podcast. I think this is an intentional desire to be in relationship with the Lord. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, okay. Being fascinated with Jesus. That's what we're going to put into practice. Looking at Isaiah chapter nine. That was, this is so far from manger voices. <laughs> I just want everybody to know they called me out the last time. We kind of had like a nursery show the other day. <laughs> was like the let's, let's, let's was talk like about little, she was here. I felt her. We were just like the major voices. It was like let's you know be in the baby's room. <laughs> we're at less than ten minutes, and both of you have already shouted <laughs> and spiked on the sound. Uh, the spear sh- juice uh, is going to no. Love I don't that. care. We don't care about that. We we, we just we already shouted <laughs> less than ten minutes, bro. Sometimes it takes ten minutes to get to the start. You guys, we've already, we went we've already, this is a, <laughs> This is it. This is new. Isaiah 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Because here, okay. We're looking at, this is, it, it, this is from Father Benedict. When we used to go and meet with Father Benedict, he would encourage us to basically like pay attention to Jesus, to learn about Jesus. Hmm. Um, so, so being fascinated with Jesus in the sense of getting to know his, his character, like getting to know his face, getting to know his heart. Um, and one of the things that that, that sort of, that we apply that is when we're reading the scriptures is this is again, this is part of this like going deeper. It's like, okay, this is the event, but what is it revealing about the heart of God? Mm. What is this revealing about Jesus? And so what I, what I, what we're going to do for the next four episodes is we're going to 
put this into practice. We're going to be looking at the heart of God, the character of God, getting to know again on a deeper level who Jesus is. Word? Word. Word. So this is Come this on. is this is kind of Christmassy Adventy, but we're not this I'm not going to tell you how much I love Advent right now. Do you love Advent? I love Advent. Favorite time of year. But we're not going to save that for another time. <laughs> That's good. A lot of people str- like uh, struggle with Advent. Big fan of Advent. They struggle, meaning they don't get that fired up about it. But that's good. Um, so Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. We go down a little bit. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A child is to be born in his name will be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Mm. This just gets me, I don't know, maybe this is a this is a great thing. It gets me fired up just reading it. Beautiful. <laughs> Anybody else? You guys Love you guys it. with Love me? It. I'm feeling I'm with you, bro. All right. So what we're gonna we're gonna do is this episode we're gonna look at wonderful counselor. And I almost want to go straight to Father <laughs> Innocent here. Can we can we do that? Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is kind of, we're going with the flow Rocket. here. Because like, original, Rocket. like, I had something, but what you said was really good. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm for yeah, it. Yeah, go can, for and it. Never, you can, you never cease to impress people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> can you, we we'll just kind of leave. You know yeah, anyway. So, in show prep, we were talking about this current cycle of readings, which we're talking about the book of Job, right? And I just mentioned that my heart's moved by this this story when this comes up, because Again, I'm not an expert on Job, and I don't know, like, Father Manuel has given great homilies on the movement of the book and stuff. But generally, like, y- you, we know that Job experiences a great tragedy. He loses everything, right? And we have, we, we have his experience working through this, right? Being confronted with losing his family, losing everything, right? And we have, we experience his temptations. His friends try to, to question and, like, and he has he has this really really stern stern uh, strong faith in God. He doesn't question, but the book moves to this 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 questioning and like are we we're we're in this place of trying to understand the works of God and, and suffering and and all these different things mm-hmm. and and underneath it all you can you can see Job's friends come and they try to say all these different things and Job's like there's he's struggling with the tension and. And the response of God is, is just absolutely wonderful in the face of all these kind of questions and these, and these, and kind of this lack of trust, right? And he says this, the Lord addressed, the Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, have you ever in your lifetime commanded the morning and shown the dawn its place for taking hold of the ends of the earth till the wicked are shaken from its surface? The earth is changed as is, is is clay by the seal and dyed as though it were a garment. But from the wicked, the light is withheld and the arm pride is shattered. Have you ever entered the sources of the sea or walked about in the depths of the abyss? Have the gates of death been shown to you or have you been seen the gates of darkness? Have you comprehended the breath of the earth? Tell me if you know all. Which is the way to the dwelling place of light mm. and where is the abode of darkness? that you may take them to their boundaries and set them on their homeward paths. You know, because you were born before them and the number of your years is great. Then this is beautiful. Then Job answered the Lord and said, behold, I am of little account. What can I answer you? I put my hand over my mouth. Though I have spoken once, I will not do so again. Though twice I will do no, I will do so no more. In the place of all this questioning of our suffering and our life and why things are the way they are, God just has this wonderful litany of questions to Job and, his, and, and, the, and us. Like, were you there? When the wonder counselor was making the world, when he was creating everything from his word, from his breath, were you there when I needed you together in your mother's womb? I, I love this. Were you there when the dawn was there and the darkness was there? And, and Job is absolutely overwhelmed by the power and the providence of the living God. And he says, behold, I am a little of count. What I can, what can I answer you? I put my hands over my mouth. And where, and so the jumping off point for us, brothers, we have a wonder counselor. This is God. This is the Holy Trinity. This is the son of God 
in its, its shining beauty that he is the creator of the, of the universe, the living God, right? And he is the wonder counselor that knows best, that's most provident, that's most good. And before that, we are, what's our response? Do we want to continue to control and understand? Or like Job, are we convicted to be like, okay, I let go. I'm a little account and I put my hands over my mouth and where we're going to lead is I will follow. I will, I will say yes. I will accept everything that God gives. How's that? That's very good. <laughs> nice that's all, that's nice all I got. That's nice all I got. One, nice one. <laughs> this isn't what the Lord is saying, but it's, it's a little bit like stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, that's what maybe this episode could be called. Just stay in your lane. <laughs> stay in your lane. But, but it's like stay in your lane is like a little bit harsher, but it's, it's, oh, it's like, okay, wait, wait. Okay, Joe. All right, Joe, with your, with your mm-hmm. vision and your experience. Were, were you there? <laughs> I love it. When, <laughs> you know, all the Genesis one stuff happened. And that's not, that's a, that's not a bad thing to go to, but it's, it's not like, it's not like sit down and shut up. It's just, it's trust. That's what it is. It's trust. It's, it's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I don't want, stay in your land is just kind of funny, but. But I know, like it. Little, and yeah. it's, it's also like Father Angels was saying last episode too, is like, can you, like, can you see deeper? Like, do you trust me? Do you, you know that I'm good? Yeah. And to stay, if you stay in your lane, I, I promise you, I will protect you and, and, and give you everything you need. But were you, were you there when I did all these things? I mean, I just think it's, God, is just, I love it. It's like, whoa, okay. I put my hand over my mouth. I'm out. I trust you. <laughs> like, hmm. I was just thinking when you were talking, Father Innocent, um, Jesus just, what does Jesus say? I was there. Hmm was there and so it just that just blows everything wide open and it blows our perspectives wide open it uh, blows our small hearts small minds our petty hearts our petty minds where we just get so limited in our vision limited on our understanding and and jesus like again again can if we're fascinated with jesus i was there Mm -hmm. i got this i know how it all works i know my father my father is good we it's it's more than you think there's more going on than you think. He says, I think it's right to the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's like, like before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. Well, it's, it's essentially like, yeah, like I was there. Yeah. I was there. Um, were, you, were you there when all this happened? I was. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was. And what's beautiful is that this, he, he was there as yeah. Isaiah 9. Like I was there as wonder counselor. Mm-hmm. The one who, who, is the, who, who is the living power mm-hmm. of God and, and provident good. Through and not whom, to get crazy, he was the one that the father was always going to send to help us because mm-hmm. we would always need help. Through whom all things were made. Um, one of the things, is this, help me out. Is this book of Job or is this, this might be Isaiah about my ways are not your ways? I, yeah, I think that's a good question. I think that's- Because when we were talking about this, you brought it up. What, yeah, say it again. Yeah, I just, um, we, it's, it, sorry, I know it from daytime prayer. It's, it's one of the readings for daytime prayer. It's like, my ways are not, my ways, your thoughts are, your ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, right? Like, like it's, I think it says, it's a Psalm, I think maybe, but you, you're, uh, my ways are so far above the earth as you're, you know, like there's this drastic difference <laughs> between our thoughts, our ways and and. and, and God says in that scripture, like my ways are so far above your ways. Mm-hmm. And if we just, it, it takes humility, but if we just accept that, like God, your ways and your, and your thoughts are just so far beyond mine. Can you, do you experience, this is okay. This is like, uh, not your, I'm, I'm going to talk about you and the postulants. <laughs> You, you, God and Job and you and the apostles are not a very, <laughs> <laughs> very, that's very good true. analogy, that's very true. but they're, they're, I, are we, we're allowed to talk about the postulants, right? Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their moms, listen listen to to it. It. <laughs> a lot of their moms listen to yeah. this. So I just want to say a hi to all the postulant moms that listen to there this. There you go. <laughs> a lot of future, future postulants. Speaking listen to of, this. speaking of uh, postulants, they did a skit about their moms and dad's calling home. That was pretty funny. That was very funny. So they, they did Give well. them credit. They did well. They, they got just a base didn't hit. embarrass Father Anderson. Yeah, they just didn't, they, they got a base hit. I just <laughs> wanted to get on base, you know? I think it was a triple. <laughs> there was some laughs. Definitely some yeah. laughs. Absolutely. Postulans, so they, the idea was, is there, was, there was their first phone home, as they called it. So the postulants can, can call home every, at once a week for half an hour of time at the beginning here. And so they, they did a skit about calling home for the first time and it, they were pretty creative. So it was, it was awesome. 
Postulants always, we did it too. I guess postulants always have a thing about at one point they kind of like go a little bit too far. There's, <laughs> there's like when they pulled off whoever the last guy was, they pulled off Jay and like they hit the chairs, like, all right, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, they got to go for it. Um, but the, do you have this at all with, with, with the postulants, the young men, where they're like, they're trying to kind of like maybe a little bit like control or they're, a little, they're trying to like, like, this is how I think it's supposed to be. And they kind of get frustrated when it's not. And you have to be like, just trust me, bro. Like, I've, I've seen this before. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Just just trust me. Is that something? Yeah, it's it's definitely a thing. And I, it, what the good news is, it's pretty unconscious. Unconscious. Like, subconscious? Un, subconscious. <laughs> unconscious. They're, they're not, they're they're not unconscious. unconscious. <laughs> it seems like they're unconscious. Am I speaking no, English? No, sorry. <laughs> subconscious. Sometimes I think, am I speaking English? Like, <laughs> nod your head. I always tell them, can you just nod your head? It just makes me feel better mm-hmm. about that. You're like, actually, I feel like my dad. Like, are you listening? Um, but I do think there's this subconscious thing where, where it's hard for us to trust. And we, we do, we have been formed or informed. And so we think that there's the things should be a certain way that life should be a certain way. We don't want to suffer. We don't want to be challenged. And even again, if it's kind of below the surface, you might not be aware of it. And sometimes you're just like, guys, I need you to trust me and need you to let go. Or like, just to be honest, be, before episodes, I went upstairs and um, postulants have class, right? And so they were sitting in this hot library. I'm like, why do you turn a fan on there? And they're all tired. It's like class at one, one to three is like bad idea. Bad idea. <laughs> but we need to do it. Yeah. Right. So they're doing a class. Got to do some things that are hard. Sometimes. But that's why I said, I was like, guys, this is not an ideal time. And you, the thing is, you know, we got to do some catechism stuff. We have to, theology is good for religious. We all have classes in postulancy to start off, you know, in, in a solid way. And it's not, it's not like the funnest. Is that a word? It's not like the Most funnest fun. thing. We're, fr- <laughs> we're Franciscans, bro. They give us a break. Um, but I need you to like lean into it, you know? So I get up there that some of the heads are, their heads are down. I'm like, how, how was the, how was the, uh, how, you know, how was the first class? They're like, I, I need, yeah, he's all right. And I'm like, yeah, this is good for you. Dig deep because we, we need to do this. And it's not, mm-hmm. again, it's not the most enjoyable, but trust me, mm-hmm. like this is good for you. So it's like similar, which is like, I need you to let go to what you think is best and I won't hurt you. <laughs> I have your good in mind. And just to, to follow, to, to, to let go. Mm-hmm. I, oh, dang. There's a story I wanted to, I don't think, I think it might be too, too hard to fit into this, but I can't, <laughs> well, maybe, because I was thinking like something where, where would be a situation where I'm totally with somebody who's like, uh, like a master, like who knows what they're doing. And so I'm just, I'm just going to like. Was that when you, Michelle was doing the podcast with us? You were sit, kind of sitting at her feet and she was teaching you how to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to let that slide. I was just. We I love was, you, Michelle. We love you, Michelle Benzinger. One of our uh, CFR sister missionaries that also told me to be nice to Michelle. <laughs> so I'm not gonna. That's what I was doing. That's what I do with Michelle. I sit at the feet of the master and just <laughs> soak it in. But so if, if if Father Angelus and I are in the kitchen and we're cooking together, I'm gonna and he says, "Hey, chop this, throw this in, whatever." I'm just gonna do it, right? Yeah. Because you know what you're doing. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I do know. No, I appreciate that. And often guys will do that. Some guys know what to do in the kitchen. Some guys don't. And you don't have to try, like try to be someone you're not if you don't have that yeah. skill. I, Father Mark, I just think you need to be at peace with the fact that... That you're a leftover guy. That's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at peace with it. I need everybody else to be at peace with it. <laughs> you're a leftover guy. That's, you know, you rock the, the yeah. leftovers. I'm a doer of dishes. Oh, wait, bro. And that's okay. Cause we I rock, don't like to do dishes. We rocked the dishes last night. <laughs> we, how many, we, how many dishes did we There's a do? lot of dishes. That hey, we, we got to talk about that at some point. I feel like no one else does any, actually are we airing community grief right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you're in, that's why I realize. That's, that's what that's, happens when you live at the formation house with all the young guys. You got a lot of them and they're like, Hey, we'll put you on the hardest job. Yeah. That's okay. There. Yeah. There's a lot of us. And yeah. You guys owned it. I was in there with you, but I was just trying. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> I did feel that when the assignment came out, because like at, at OLA, it was always like you set up the drinks or something like that. No big deal. Take the garbage out. I'll take the garbage out. <laughs> Clear the tables. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, what we were talking about <laughs> sitting at the feet of the master. Yeah, because like. what I was thinking. So like, if it's true though, like with Father Angels, because this was the idea is like, if you, if you just Father Mark Mary in the kitchen, if you just if you do what I'm asking you to do, this is going to come out. Good. This is a good going to yeah, be a good yeah. meal. Don't get cute with me. Yeah. Just do what I ask you to do. <laughs> that, we don't need a cup full of turmeric or whatever. That was part <laughs> yeah, exactly. of the last night. Um, and when, when Father Angelus is blending um, tilapia, 
<laughs> he's got sloppy in the blender. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get worried about the it. I'm just, gonna, brothers, I'm just gonna trust. I'm gonna wait and see what comes out. They call that warm fish smoothie. Uh, in the world, they call it a bisque, and they pay a lot of money for it. <laughs> I tried to do nice things for the brothers and cook nice things. I made a tilapia bisque once, actually a couple times, and it's high quality soup that you could get in a restaurant. And people and the call it warm, warm fish, fish smoothie. smoothie. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's one of my. It's my one of my, one of my very favorite food stories because. It's funny looking when you're throwing fish in, in, like, in the blender. smoothie blender. This is what guys the make smoothie the smoothie blender. Absolutely. And then, um, but it came out great. Because if it didn't come out good, we couldn't really joke about it. Yeah, we couldn't really joke so about good. it. But it is good. And that's why we can all take it. Because it's like, oh yeah, that's actually, th- it's actually good. We had some guests that night. Hey, bro, you want some warm fish smoothie? <laughs> like what? Like you can't describe it that way. Mercy. Yes. All right. So, Father Angelus, thanks for uh, the, yeah, absolutely the warm for fish being your, be, for being your wonderful counselor in the kitchen. <laughs> um, all right, so where like, and I think we get it right. Like, if if a master knows what's like, if we're in their presence, we like we let them lead, and and that's where we're coming with the Lord, the wonderful counselor. I was there when. This beautiful. I, read some. Say that again. Say that again. It's just beautiful. It's no, got to like, be quoted. My like, favorite part, like. Have you ever in your lifetime commanded the morning and shown the dawn its place? Have you ever entered the sources of the sea or walked about in the depths of the abyss? Have the gates of death shown to you or have you seen the gates of darkness? Have you comprehended the breath of the earth? Tell me if you know all. Yeah, it's like, bro, like you flipped on a light switch. I, I made the dawn. <laughs> yeah, you, know totally I mean? like, you know what I mean? Like when we're, it's a question of light. Hey, didn't Father, didn't Father Benedict always, one, one of his lines was just, were you there? Yeah. Oh, is that what he's referring yeah, to? Yeah, that's what. Were you there? Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's pretty awesome. That's a good line. I, I, I don't. I remember hearing it, but I never. I think it's in this context. Yeah, got, got the depth of it. And so, where do we like? My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Like Jesus comes and says, "I am the way." Like I am the master. And what what is the wonderful counselor say um, <clears throat> most succinctly is, "Come, follow me." Yeah. Like that's, that's what, that's what he, that's what, that's the answer. That's what I'm, that's what I'm giving you. This is what you need. Come follow me. Um, and, and I don't know, do you, that's just, that means a lot to me. Yeah. And it, and it's so powerful. Like I just wanted to set it out there. Like when the wonderful counselor says, come follow me. Hey, there's so many things that provokes in me, but like, guys, we don't have to figure it out. We don't have to figure anything out. Mm-hmm. Jesus says, the wonderful counselor, the provident father, the, 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 he is so good. And he says, just come follow me. Mm. I'm just going to ask you to trust. I'm going to ask you to let go. And, and we, we just celebrated the Feast of St. Francis and we had the monologues by, and brother, by um, the monologues of St. Francis. And, and one of the lines is like, Jesus, I just want to be where you are. When, when, we, when Jesus invites us to follow him, we have to let go of all figuring stuff out and, 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 and trying to force life and trying to, and, and trying to make it make sense right now. No, Jesus, all that really matters is I want to follow you. I just want to be where you are because if it's true that you are good and that you love me and that you, that you are provident and you will fulfill me, then I will follow you. That's all I want. Not to go back to the image of what that Father Innocent was saying, but earlier, like, are we asking the postulants to follow Father Innocent? Come no, no, well, we, a no, little bit. no, but a we are. But, but that's a, as as a counselor to them, obviously participating in the gift of the Lord. And I'm thinking my work with the guys discerning. It's just like in this discernment mm-hmm. process, let's go somewhere together. But I'm asking you to trust me. I'm asking you to kind of. I was thinking some of our guys in this particular class. One of them was a doctoral student, and he's in catechism class right now. Yeah, he was the one that was like, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but like, this is the dynamic is that yeah. a lot of these guys like St. Francis have other lives, have so many gifts on a, in a human way are incredibly gifted and talented. And they're being invited to come follow the Lord in a, in a new way through their postulant director. It's not just class. It's a way of life where we follow. And, and in discernment, we follow. And it, could it be brothers that like the pastor, his, his role at a pastor at a parish is follow me to heaven, follow me to the Lord. Parents convincing their kids through the, the life of family life together, follow me. 
like in a group of friends, let's follow, you know? And so I just think it's, I think you're right on, bro, but it's, it's difficult to follow when, well, I have a doctorate where I have my gifts and I have my talents and I have my, I was explaining to someone the other day, everybody just wants to be an expert. I just want to be an expert in something and that's going to define me. And then I'm going to be the guy that gets to go on Fox news and tell everybody about this particular topic. <laughs> I get to go on EWTN. Well, I'm the guy that's, that knows a lot about this or I'm the guy that I'm the TOB guy. We always joke like I'm the theology of the body guy or I'm the catechism guy or I'm the scripture guy or I'm the this or I'm the that. We want to be experts because then we can follow Like we mm. get to follow ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we're an invita- invited to follow. And I think that's a hard Jesus as the counselor is giving us a gift to follow. He's giving us counsel, but it's not advice. It's an invitation to move after him, to follow after him. And I think to get this right is, is key. I like a lot of what you're saying. Just this, it's almost like um, we, we don't need, this is, I think it's just follow me here. He's like, or yeah, follow me here. Get it. Um, like we don't <laughs> like, we don't need more trailblazers. We need more followers. In a sense, like St. Paul says, be imitators of me as I am of Christ, mm. right? And that's what Father Ernest said. That's, yeah, uh, you were uncomfortable I, said, with I only said no because I, the, the, the reality is that incarnationally, we have, a, we have an incredible gift as priests to lead people and like follow. Yeah. But like it, the reality is like, I want them to follow. We need, we need them to follow Jesus. <laughs> but they do that through you. It's, and that's humbling. It is. Just so, you, just so we're clear, my, my turn wasn't up. <laughs> I knew that. I knew I that. Was, uh, I, for some reason, he went I back to make you. sure that I was okay. I forgive you do we, both. Do you want us to apologize? <laughs> Could you please <laughs> go both? back to St. Paul, please? St. <laughs> Paul, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. We talk about following Jesus, but we talk about following Jesus in the footsteps of St. Francis. And there's something mm-hmm. of it. It's like mm-hmm. following Jesus in the footsteps of St. Francis <clears throat> with whatever, the fatherhood of Father Innocent. Like, that's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. I'm just laughing at you. Like, let's just be clear. My turn wasn't up. <laughs> All that stuff that you guys you said, punk. I was, I was going to get there. <laughs> Um, you, you, I just got excited. We, yeah, we're like, I like when that happens. Father Glenn says we're like little puppy dogs who are like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna say it's true. It's true. I, you've been referred to as golden retrievers before, which are if you're going to be a good dog, it's a good it's dog. A, it's a good dog. It's a good dog to be. Anyway, back to you, Father Mark Mary. This is really about you. <laughs> yes, back to my, my turn on my podcast. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you on it. Um, but there's something actually very deep there about following about being okay with being a follower uh because that's not like very much it's 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 very much not a worldly value at all it's almost mocked and particularly Uh, an american value yeah it's like be do your own thing like yeah just blaze your own trail and 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 christ like follow me he's like were you there bro were you there when (laughs) were you there at the dawn like what do you like why are you what are you trying to what are you trying to figure out? Like, just follow me. Like, I gotta you, figure like, it out. You, you don't been, have to do this. Have you been like, you know, have you gone to the darkness, the darkest, the, the darkest end? Have you worried at the abyss? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. So like the darkness you're experiencing, I was, I, I was there. I've been at the furthest end. Follow me, bro. Follow Can me. Can we be followers? I love that. Like, and that's, I think that's provocative, mm-hmm. but I do think that's at the heart of Christianity. Like, can you follow? Yeah. Mm. I, yeah. And that's something of, of, of how we find the, the, the answer to our struggle to figure it out is just to be at peace with being a follower, mm. right? And if we have that disposition of being okay with being a follower, because we have confidence that the one who we follow is, is the way, was there, um, there's a lot of peace to that. And uh, it's not easy by any stretch because yeah. we do want to, we want to know what's going on, but just to, like, we're, Jesus says, come follow me. Jesus said, like, go over, go over there, figure it out. Come follow me. Mm. That's, I don't know. That's important to me. Yeah. And, and I agree. And I, I think that the struggle is that's, that there is a brokenness in us. And John Paul II refers to this, that from the very beginning, I think we were made, Adam and Eve were made to follow, mm-hmm. right? They were made to follow God and they were made to live in this relationship. And, and, the, the enemy sowed a lie that the father's not good and it will not provide for you. So then Adam, Adam turns away. He gets disoriented. He thinks he has to do it himself. He thinks he has to create his own path and create his own happiness, right? Own fulfillment. And, and the lie is sown, mm-hmm. right? So like, it's, it's hard for us to follow, right? There's just, there's something, there's something in us. There's like an, well, I'm going to call it like an existential meaning at the, at the, 
kind of at the, at the core, at yeah. the core, there's like this existential disorientation. It's hard for us to follow. And I only want to say that because I think that's why Jesus comes. Like we have a person now to follow. Mm-hmm. We have a face, we have a, we have a heart, we have a relationship to say like, I want to follow after you. And we just spent, you know, the past, how many weeks talking about this discipleship with Jesus. And so I think that's what he wants to heal. Like, I know, I know it's hard for you to follow, but I'm here and I'm going to show you the way. And I'm a wonder counselor. And every step of the way, I will care for you. I will love you. I will show you how good I am. And I will never leave you. But I just need you to take a step. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, Jesus, it's hard for me. I, I can't, I, it's struggle to trust. And like, I'm afraid and like all these different things, but she's like, hey, hey, look at me. Just one step. You know, so I think I just wanted, I just wanted to point out that like, it's okay in your heart that we struggle. There's like a disorientation or a little brokenness, but this is what Jesus comes to restore so that we can follow him. We, we talked about this. So now, now, now we're going to make the next step. It's like, okay, cool. I think most of our listeners are like, okay, I'm, I'm down. Like, I want to follow Jesus. How, how do I do that? Right. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? And this is, this is some of the genius of, of St. Francis is, St. Francis had this crazy love and devo- like to the word of God. Cause the understanding is like, like with the word of God, basically I can, through scripture, I learn how to follow Jesus. Right. Mm-hmm. What, there's some, there's some line about this, but, but that's basically, it's like, it's almost like, um, again, the day of Arab used the words, like when we look at scripture, we, we, we contemplate the face of God, like through a mirror. It's like scripture. It's like this, it's like this mirror. And when we we're praying with scripture, we have it before us, we can see the face of God and we can follow him. And if we don't have the scripture, we don't, it's like, we don't have the mirror, right? And we need the mirror to see, to see the face of the Lord. That was a stretch, but, but <laughs> no, there's, on, there's something on. about that. You guys know you got it. Yeah, you got but it. that's, that's just so important. Like, how do I follow Jesus? Come follow me. Um, how do I get the answers instead of trying to like, uh, find them, figure it out on my own. Like come to the word of God. Yeah. Like I am the way and I reveal myself, um, in a most privileged way through the word of God. And so my brothers and sisters, if you desire to be a follower of Jesus and freed from the burden of trying to figure out on your, all on your own, be a man or a woman of the scriptures, you know, who, who sits with, uh, the master who follows him and allows him to reveal, um, all that you're looking for to be the, to be the, the light for your steps through, through the scriptures. I was just going to say, we rejoice in the truth that we're made in the image and likeness of God. But I think the disorientation, we make God in our own image and likeness. And so sometimes God's abstract. He's a, he's a little off. Something's weird about our own because we make him into what we want him to make. And so the healing happens when we go to this objective place where we meet God. Right. And so, which is the scriptures is this objective truth of a revelation of the person of God, especially as we get to the new Testament of the person of Jesus. So, regardless of our own experience of Jesus, regardless of how we see him or how we experience him to be rooted and anchored in the word of God is this, is this can be a new grace every time. And I was just thinking this, we, we recently have taught the postulants how to do Lexio Vina. Again, they're asking to follow. Most of them know how to pray Lexio Vina, but we're asking them to relearn it and to go deeper. And we, the, the teaching is, is that I, I use one scripture verse and then it's the, where God leads me in that is what is the truth about Jesus in this scripture? What, what truth is being revealed to me about the person of Jesus in this very line, in this very story that I'm reading? We do not let them get away from every time they read the scripture to say, what is the truth that God is revealing to me about Jesus in this scripture? And to go on to that, this, that's the first question. And the second question is, before I can get up, before I allow those postures to get up from Lexio, not only is what is it real about Jesus, but what's it real about Jesus' heart for me, right? So it's like, it's a revelation of Jesus, but it's a wonder counselor for me. Mm. It's a wonderful counselor for me in my heart right now. Yeah. Like what, so I love sitting with him because it's like a big question. What's Jesus's heart for you in the scripture? Uh, um, you know, like, so it's beautiful. It's like those two questions. What does it reveal about Jesus? And what does it reveal about his heart for me? Because what does it reveal about Jesus? Is this, oh, this is a nice thought about Jesus. No, 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 yeah. But what does that mean for you? In this moment, in this, in, in this revelation of your own prayer time, what does God want to say to you about this particular truth? And then, and then everybody knows you know this, Father Mark Mary, but then they have to go and share with us about what's happening in their prayer. This, I think, is a gift. I, obviously, guys are being formed into religious to be consecrated men and women. But think about it, brothers and sisters. Is every time we read the scripture, which our encouragement is daily, 
every time we receive, receive and uh, read the scriptures, if we can start to think in this way, Lord, what is the truth that you're revealing about Jesus today in the scripture? And what does it mean in my life right now? And the scriptures become this concrete place to experience the counsel of God mm-hmm. and the truth of who God, or like what he wants to reveal to us. And I, I just want to throw this out there because it's been a powerful experience for me because when postulants come, and again, this, the reason why I'm sharing this is because it's not just for postulants, it's for all of us as we learn to pray, is that what I've, what I've, what I've been in, like, moved to do is, is we teach them how to like, in, engage and encounter the Jesus in, in the word of God. But it, this might be controlling, but like, listen, like, I don't, I don't want to have a missed opportunity. So I give them scriptures and like, I'm calling it um, encountering Jesus, Alexio retreat. And so I give them four or four scriptures a week that start from the very beginning of the gospels and, and, and focus on the encounters with Jesus. And so they have four scriptures and, and they're, they're not narrative or excuse me, they're not the exhortations of Jesus, right? They are, they are then like the encountering the stories, the experience of following Jesus in my life, in the, in the life of, of the gospels. Right. And it's beautiful because it's, it's, it's so concrete and Jesus does invite us on a journey of revelation. And so when the Protestants have done that, they're doing this, we're like, whoa, like this is personal. And you don't, and the gospels are so beautiful, but there are concrete moments where Jesus reveals his heart. Mm. And so when inviting them on this Lexi retreat, they're like encountering Jesus. We're, we're, we're making it super simple. And I just think they encounter like just this wonderful counselor who really wants to care for them and really wants to show them his heart, his heart. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the guys, this is new. They're like, Oh my gosh, like the word of God is coming alive. Jesus is coming alive. And they've been praying for a long time in their lives. I mean, they've been, they've been disciples for a while, but they, again, it, this seems like a new encounter, a new way to, to approach scripture, which is again, I think just consoling for everybody, wherever you're at, is that there's an, always a new grace. If you enter in intentionally with the desire to meet God and have him reveal himself. One of the thoughts I was thinking, because postulancy comes from the word like to ask questions, right? Mm-hmm. Is that that's, you're teaching them to ask the right questions. That's part of it. It's like, what does this say about the heart of God? I think that's a just an interesting thing. Um, a couple of witnesses or a couple of just observations. This is a really Franciscan podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like this particular one or just, just in, in general? Because <laughs> I think, right, like it's, it's, it's brothers together. First of all, it's brothers together. And after, <laughs> after like a pretty long night in this like ghetto... <laughs> This is our, our, whatever, third, fourth, fifth place we've recorded in because construction we keep getting, outside. We keep, the construction, we keep getting kicked out. But with this focus on Jesus and the word of God, this, this is like, this is St. Fran, like we have a, a real relationship with St. Francis and, and like his spirituality, his approach, his way of praying, his way of following Jesus is for us as opposed to just following a rule, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, a lot of different orders, Benedictines, Dominicans, it's a little bit more rule-based where it's ours is very personal base. It's like St. Francis and his love of the word of God was crazy. Like, cause he wanted to follow Jesus. This is, this is how I get to know this is how I follow Jesus. Um, what is this thing about discipleship? Maricaca said about putting my foot. In oh his- yeah. So the translation he uses in his other commentaries on the gospel of Matthew is that is actually when Jesus says to come follow me, it's like actually place your foot in mine. Mm. Like, so he's, Jesus is, is walking like ahead of us. He's like, like you said in show prep, like he's a light unto our path, right? He's a lamp and he's actually showing us where to step yeah. and it's his steps and it's his life. Yeah. And so it's like, it's, it's taking the walk in my steps. And it's like, if you think if the image of somebody like walking in the snow and they leave their foots, mm-hmm. it's their footprints. It's like scripture is almost that. It's like the footprints of Jesus in the snow. It's like, this is, if you want to know where to put your step, how to put your foot where mine was or whatever is like, you got to go to the scriptures. Um, mm. It's more than that because it's the the life of God is actually communicated through this as opposed to just sort of a... It's a nice story. Yeah. Um, but even, I think the, the beauty of, again, as, as a witness of this is I, I came with like, hey, let's do this wonderful counselor thing. Um, and you're like, okay, I got this thing about Job that's been speaking to me. And it's, it, but it's because you've had a relationship with the word of God and you've, you've been listening to the word of God throughout the week. And this, this is for you our dear listeners, this is for you to be able to come to whatever is kind of brought before you in life with the word of God um, and to be able to follow Jesus in all situations. You're not going to be able to follow Jesus at all times, at all things, if you're not following him in specific times and specific things, particularly by carving mm-hmm. out time 
uh, at least, yeah, every day to sit with the word of God. And if you're not doing that because you have too many other things, you're not fascinated with Jesus yet. You know, like a, a test of whether or not you're fascinated with Jesus is like, are you, do you have enough space and enough freedom and enough sort of like need for him that you, you, you prioritize it? Um, what's that? House? I, I love it. It's bold. I love it. And, and I think, I think the encouragement is, is, is to lean into that challenge. And, and that's why like, I will email you the Lexio retreat and just take one scripture a week. If that's all you do. How long is this? How many, this is every day? No, you have this four, every you, week. You have four scriptures a week that, that show you the heart of Jesus. But and it's every week for postulancy? It's every week for postulancy. Till Christmas. So, well, at least, yeah, till Christmas. So it's like two or three months. It's a retreat, a weekly retreat. And I'm, I mean, I will send it to whoever wants it. How are you going to do that? It's through Father Mark Mary. It's through Father Mark Mary. Yeah, just, Father right. Mark, just so we're clear here. Just Father so Mark Mary will send it to everyone. That I don't know. I, I don't know how we're going to do is how it. We, this is why we, we're supposed to get this Facebook group up so we can put something like that there on there. You go. There you go. But it, and I, whether you use that or not, I, I just want you to be fascinated with the Word of God, and I want you to be fascinated with the person of Jesus that wants to reveal His heart to you. And this is the Wonder Counselor. He wants to love you and care for you and show you the way. He wants to say, "Hey, listen, I was there. I know how to do this." <laughs> Yeah, I think just to, uh, when you, you had say, something right, to say, right? No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't I didn't say, yeah. No, I did. But you had the tender voice. No, because where you no, going? I was beautiful because you used the word again, and I just want, feel like I just wanted just to throw it out there again to kind of comment is wonder, wonderful, like counselor. Like when you when he reads the job, when he when you talk about were you there, and we talk about it like from the furthest ends to the light to the dawn to the this to the snow to the, the what does it do in our hearts? It creates this like whoa, whoa. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that's meaning what, like evokes wonder. Yeah, evokes wonder, and it's like it, to us to experience like the is to read the word of God and to invoke this place in us to invoke this wonder about who God is and the, the I don't know He's wonderful, and He He invokes and and brings about something in us that takes away all the complicated, mm. to takes away all the selfishness, to take away all the anxiety, to take our way when we see something and we we enter into awe and wonder. We kind of like, oh, whoa, like it's a place where I can take, like stop and, and see something different. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was, I was, I was kind of touching on the, the word wonderful as well. It's like, it's not, there are, in two ways. It's not like I'm, I'm a decent counselor. I'm a pretty good counselor. It's like, I'm a wonderful counselor. Like, yeah. like if, if I have um, a capacity to guide your footsteps, that's like so beyond anything uh, you imagine. And I think as, as you allow the wonderful counselor to wonderfully counsel you as you follow him. Like you will be filled with wonder as well. Yeah. I'm a counselor who's wonderful, but also who evokes wonder when you see how like beautiful uh, my ways are in mystery. Yeah. But I was going to say it's a mystery because we when it when just like you invoke wonder. You don't evoke something you can grasp onto or fully understand or fully get or fully explain. You get something that you're like, whoa, this is, this is beautiful. And wow, I have to take a step back and enter in or look in, into it differently. Just recently, I, again, I've talked about this retreat, but I went on retreat. And when I got back, someone said, hey, how was your retreat? And I didn't expect or, or, or plan on this response, but I said, it was wonderful. I was like, whoa. Like I didn't, I thought to myself, I was like, what did I mean by that? It was wonderful. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I think there's a little something about this. And we, we, t- we mainly touched on the council piece, the council to Jesus counsels us to follow him, to, to place our steps in his. But let's not forget that there's this, uh, he's a wonderful counselor. And that describes who he is. And, and that should invoke this beautiful response in us of, of being bowled over or kind of blown over by his goodness, his tenderness. We talked about that last time. And it's this mysterious reality in us. We're like, whoa, how good he is. Um, from the very beginning, from all that creation to now, he's, this, he's invoking this wonder and awe in us. And I want to I want to bring home or uh, sort of identify something you said, right? Because you're on this retreat. It was a week long retreat, mm-hmm. yeah. And you prayed four four hours a day, four hours a day with scripture, yeah. right? With scripture, and that's one. that's the whole point. Like, what was the what was the fruit of that? Like, that was wonderful. And just this, this mm-hmm. encouragement, as again, as as there are a lot of other things, in like kind of calling for your time and your attention, mm-hmm. like to the the fruit of spending time with scripture is wonderful. Mm-hmm. you know and 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 you didn't like that's thing it's just that's what happened yeah absolutely and i and i you don't until you go on a retreat like that or until you're kind of called out in that way you don't realize how much you feel your prayer time with yeah. 
we have prayer time. I have my I have a holy hour and I have meditation time. And even people, our, our dear friends in the world, yeah, I pray every day. Uh, well, what's going on in that prayer? How are you feeling that prayer? And devotions are great. Rosary is great. Novena is great. All these things to, to do our daily prayers are great. But when we read the word of God, something happens mm-hmm. and it creates again, this, this moment in us to encounter something different, someone different. Um, and then the Lord can, can use that. And so it's just an encouragement. We all need to be kind of called on and, and we, we, we set aside the time is as the encounter happens. Well, what do we, what do we open to mm-hmm. and how is the Lord working in that? Absolutely. Yeah. And it, in a real way, when we sit with scripture, we're looking, we were looking at the wonderful face of God, mm-hmm. you know, Amen. the beautiful face of Jesus. And the, it's, it's like, it's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Guys, it just occurred to me that the next, the answer of Job after, after Jesus says, we there, he says, Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be hindered. I have, I have dealt with great things that I do not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I cannot know. I had heard of you by word of mouth, and now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I disown what I have said, and I repent in dust and ashes. And then it says, thus, says, thus the Lord blessed Job for the rest of his life. That's pretty cool. That was not the, the wonderful. That I, was not I orchestrated. Have, I, that was I, not previously known. I, I, no. I, I have dealt with great things I do not understand. Things too wonderful for me hmm. that I cannot know. But I love, I love this. I've heard, I, I have heard of you by word of mouth, but now my eyes have seen you. And that's just like the following of Jesus. But now my eyes have seen you and I follow. And it's just beautiful. And I repent for trying to control and and thus the Lord blessed the later days, the latter days of Job more than the early ones. Amen. And the fruit of that, it's not like Job figured it all out. He still had to live. And he, yeah. still, had, he still had to trust. And he still had he still suffered. Mm-hmm. And he still his he still had to deal with the adversities of life. But I've seen the Lord and it filled my heart with wonder. And therefore I'm able to take step by step by step. Because yeah, that that it's just so beautiful. I mean, that wasn't even, that was like, like it was planned, but it wasn't. You're like, whoa, 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 hold on, go further, go further. <laughs> it's beautiful. It is. Bring, should, should we bring it home? I thought this was a good one, by the way. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Are we getting better at this? I, I don't this know one, what's happening. This one, this one was good for me. It's so funny you say that because it's like evangelizes me, like the last one on Our Lady. And even this one, I'm like, whoa, like the Lord, the Lord is just allowing us to go deeper ourselves and, in, uh, and have a deep love for the, our, yeah. pe- our people we shepherd here. But it's like, this is also Franciscan. Like, guys, I need this more than probably the listeners. <laughs> yeah. like, I need to be reminded. Like, I want to go deeper and we go deeper together. It's beautiful. Thanks, guys, for going deeper. Thanks, man. So I'm going to do my little in review thing. <laughs> this is you, bro. This is you at your best. This is where you shine, bro. <laughs> this, this is, is the only shine. place. Um, that's a funny thing, too. Because, um, again, so one primary principle goal of this podcast is to invite you to be fascinated with Jesus and that it's, it's, it's more than just it's, we're going to throw it out there as an invitation, but it's more than an invitation because um, it's in it is salvation, right? Like we, we need, we need to be fascinated with Jesus and it, and it saves us from trying to figure it out. And the, the way in which we can um, really be fascinated with Jesus, what that looks like in action is following him or the fruit of fascination with Jesus is, is the freedom to follow him wherever he goes. We don't have to figure it out. He was, he was there, bro. He was there. You were not there. <laughs> you were not there, bro. He was there. He was there. And he says, come follow me. And um, there's no better place to follow Jesus, to learn how to put your footsteps where his are than in sacred scripture. And we need to be fascinated with Jesus um, to the point that we're willing to sit with scriptures and ideally every day ideally every day <sighs> boom baby come on <laughs> wonderful nice one nice that one, was nice. wonderful <laughs> that, that was wonderful. you guys are wonderful um, we definitely had our big boy voices that was good it wasn't wasn't the nurture nursery scene <laughs> yeah that was natural <laughs> so our lady of tenderness <laughs> easy let easy. me tell you about it easy Just say a prayer father innocent the Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to bless my brothers, I bless all of our listeners. I do ask, Father, to you, for you to just lift a veil to help us to see 
you and to marvel and wonder at the gift of your providence and your glory and your care you have for us. You are wonder counselor. You are the one who was there. You are the one who knows our hearts and, and knows what's best for us. You are the way and we long to follow you. We long to put our, our feet in, in your path. We beg for the gift of trust. We beg for the gift of surrender. We beg for the gift of confidence for we know that you are good and you will care for us. And like Job, we repent for the times that we have not trusted you. And we double down on the promise that you will give us everything and, and we're running after you, Lord. Amen. 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 This is like my ways are not your ways, but like you have, I am the way you have access to my way. Come follow me. It's just, come on. on. All right, 2K for the kingdom. Hit up those pap- well, Apple podcast ratings. We're trying to go shorter. We we're failing at the podcast going shorter. <laughs> How many, what do we got? That, that wasn't bad, bad, actually. That was 50, a- we're at 56 minutes. Come Are you on. serious? That seemed a lot shorter. Yeah, 56 minutes. Didn't seem shorter for our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're trying. Okay, we'll get into the other thing next time. Check out face- Spirit Juice Studios, Facebook. Thanks, Spirit Juice Studios, for making this happen. You guys are the best. You are the best. See you next week. Poco a poco. Little by little. Peace, everybody. Pray with the scriptures. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Wonder counselor. Wonderful. Yay. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love.